Following the decline of Ghana, Songhai had developed into a formidable kingdom and become a concern for Mansa Musa of the established Mali Empire. When Mansa Musa returned from Mecca in 1325, he visited the captured city of Gai, a city along the Niger River in modern-day Mali, and took two sons of the king of Songhai, Ali Konan and Selma Nar, as hostages to assure loyalty from Songhai to Mali. Forced even to fight his own people, Ali Konan was overcome with rage at the cruelties of the Melistine emperor and swore that one day he would take up arms to free his people. Ali and his brother carefully charted all the roads to Jean, and whenever Mansa would go on expeditions, they hid supplies of food, water, and arms along the way. After the death of Mansa Musa, Ali Konan escaped to Songhai and established the Sunni dynasty in 1355. The greatest ruler of the Songhai dynasty would be the grandson of Ali Konan, Sunni Ali. He is also known by Sunni Ali Bear, Bear meaning the great. Little is known about Sunni Ali's early life. According to oral tradition, Sunni Ali learned magic power and Songhai traditions from his parents and their communities. Rather than following the Mali Empire system of Islamic city rule over non-Islamic rural people, Sunni Ali mixed an unorthodox observance of Islam with traditional African religion. He was a man of the people rather than the elite ruling class of Muslim clerics and scholars. It was not long after Sunni Ali ascended to power in 1464 that he seized an opportunity to expand Songhai's borders. Muslim leaders in Timbuktu asked Sunni Ali to help overthrow the Tuareg, who had seized control of the city in 1433. In January of 1468, Ali advanced with such a formidable force of cavalry and a fleet of canoes that the Tuareg fled, after which the Songhai entered and sacked the city. Ali's ruthless slaughter of most of the Muslim Malima in Timbuktu for conspiring with a foreign enemy earned him the unanimous disdain and vituperation of the Muslim chroniclers who wrote the Tariqs, which contained the main written sources of his deeds. Even though he ravaged the Muslim community, contrary to Islamic chroniclers, he was more than a mere tyrant, which was shown in his siege on the city of Jinn. Soon after taking Timbuktu, Sunni focused his attention on the city of Jinn, an important trading center in which he saw access to gold, kola nut, and ivory producers to the south. Ali surrounded the city with the intentions of starving them out. Seven years later, on the seventh day of the seventh month of 1475, the city of Jinn fell. The young king of Jinn surrendered with honor and dignity, which pleased Sunni, so he spared the city. Sunni allowed the king to sit with him as a sign of respect for the defeated leader. Ali instructed his soldiers not to loot the city or harm the royal family. In fact, Ali would marry the queen mother of Jinn, which united the royal clans of the Songhai and Jinn. The Songhai Empire now had effective control over the lucrative Niger river trade of gold, cola, and grain. The cities were also part of the important Trans-Saharan trade route system which brought south caravans of salt and copper, as well as goods from the Mediterranean coast. During his reign, Sunni Ali showed little respect for the Muslim religion. He kept up the outward appearance of a Muslim, primarily for political purposes, as parts of his kingdom practiced the Islamic faith. He neither relinquished the traditional Songhai religion, nor did he recognize Islam as the state religion. Openly practicing the esoteric traditions and mystical sciences of his ancestors brought Ali into deep ideological conflict with the Muslim intellectuals and jurists of Timbuktu. Refusing to be a pawn of the Muslim jurists, Sunni declared himself the premier and absolute priest of the land who believed his metaphysical knowledge far excelled the pedagogical knowledge of the Muslim scholars. Plots were hatched against his rule and on one occasion, a group of clerics and scholars at an important Muslim center were executed for treason. Sunni Ali spent most of his reign in the field repulsing attacks on his empire, these coming especially from the Mosi, the Falani of the Dindi region, the Tuareg, and the Dogon. His fine strategic sense and his effective use of cavalry enabled him to cripple the striking power of the Mosi, conquer and assimilate the Dindi region, and to discourage the Tuareg raiding. Within 28 years, Sunni Ali had established a very impressive and effective army, 
consisting of infantry, cavalry, and a powerful naval force to patrol the Niger. It is recorded that after 32 military expeditions, Sunni Ali had not lost one. As a result, the Songhai Empire will ultimately become the greatest of the Sundanic empires, surpassing the legendary kingdom of Mali, and according to Rudolf Winter's book From Babylon to Timbuktu, in almost every aspect. Although it's purported that he ruled from horseback, Sunni Ali did establish an effective system of government. He turned the conquered states into provinces with the combination of his choices and extant rulers as governors. Consequently, Songhai became a centralized state dominating the entire Niger region. Sunni Ali died in 1492 as he returned from a punitive expedition against the Fulani. Oral tradition has him poisoned by Muhammad Ture, one of his commanders. In the centuries which followed his death, Muslim historians recorded Sunni Ali as the celebrated infidel or the great oppressor while Songhai oral tradition records that he was a righteous ruler of a mighty empire which stretched over 2,000 miles along the Niger River. A year later, Muhammad Ture staged a coup against Sunni Ali's son, Sunni Baru. During the short reign of Sunni Baru, he made many enemies of the Muslim clerics by continuing the beliefs of his father, that Islam was not to supersede the Songhai's indigenous belief. The plot to dethrone Baru was hatched when he rejected the petition from Muslim leaders that he convert and order his people to strictly adhere to Islamic doctrine and customs. Baru, the last of the Sunni kings, fled to a small town south of the Songhai Empire where he lived the rest of his life in exile. Muhammad Ture seized power and created a new dynasty of Eskis that lasted 100 years. Muhammad Ture and his descendants were strict Muslims who reinstated an, an orthodox observance of Islam and outlawed traditional African religions.